What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. Uh, this will be the first of five or six videos today. So if, if you had a good weekend, um, you know, maybe click that like button. Uh, and uh, if you haven't yet, please do click that red subscribe button. YouTube is definitely uh, doing something weird with subscribers right now. So make sure that you're still subscribed. Uh, I know it seems like a small thing, but um, it, it would be very greatly appreciated. Now, uh, I live in the hot take industry, um, and you know you try to bat a thousand. I uh, use a sports ball term with that, but it's nearly impossible. And I think part of the, part of the hot take industry that is severely lacking is uh, owning up to mistakes, um, admitting when you were wrong, and that includes myself. And I think it's fair to say that. At minimum, Black Widow definitely did better than I expected it would. Um, and Disney Plus Premier Access did way better than I thought it would. And I also think that it's important. I'm trying to get better at this, and I hope you guys are seeing that. I don't want to shame my viewers for consuming, so to speak. If you want to pay $30 on Disney Premium to watch Black Widow without leaving your house... That's totally fine. I, I hope that you don't get the impression that that's something to be ashamed of or, you know, that, you know, you let anyone down to your money, your free time. Maybe you've got a family of three or four and it's actually cheaper for you. There are families who pay for Disney Plus that absolutely uh, have a financial case to pay $30 to see it. I am genuinely shocked that Black Widow brought in $60 million just from Disney Plus subscriptions in the first weekend. That's 2 million households paying $30 to see this movie. Now, I think what I underestimated, now I do have that thumbnail that's like, will Black Widow tank? I don't think I ever really sat with any conviction I thought the movie would tank, um, and I and I still wonder if the film will have legs. And I still stand by my opinion that the billion-dollar Marvel movie era is over. Now, their best bet will probably be um, Thor, Love and Thunder. I still don't think that that will make a billion dollars. Maybe you can make a case for um, Spider-Man. Um, that Spider-Man kind of lives in its own kind of universe. So that's possible, but I still think that that era is done. But if you're going to bring in a hundred million dollars, you know, of every release or whatever, um, from Disney plus, you know, premium payments, I'm probably going to be wrong about that too. Marvel's black widow made $60 million on Disney plus. Is that good? In 2020, superhero movies were far from box office hero. Granted, obviously, the lockdowns, but not much could be counted on to save that day. Still, all three comic book adaptations that debuted that year, uh, Birds of Prey, New Mutants, and Wonder Woman 1984 in the middle of lockdowns, brought in grosses that paled in comparison to even middling superhero films of the previous decade. Without any historical precedent during an industry-crushing shutdown, it's impossible to know if superhero fatigue played a role in the performance of these movies. I agree with that. But that uncertainty, coupled with the deep investment by Disney, Warner Bros., and Sony in theatrical superhero features for the next five years, made the debut of Black Widow that much more of a crucial bellwether for the overall financial health of the genre. I agree, 100%. By Saturday, the film's financial outlook appeared to be bright. Black Widow had pulled in a mighty $40 million on Friday, putting the film on track to end the weekend with $100 million. That would have been on par with the best debuts for standalone Marvel movies uh, and on top of whatever film revenue it was making from Disney Plus, premium access. Not that Disney would ever share that figure, or so everyone thought. But then on Sunday morning, Disney did what other studios only teased, putting an actual figure on the movie's digital revenues. It reported that Black Widow had earned $60 million on Disney Plus worldwide, in addition to the $158 million it earned at the global box office. The disclosure was surprising. I agree, I was shocked. 
I really was. Now, I'm assuming that that means that they thought it was good. Why did Disney decide to release the VOD numbers? The only two certainties in life are death and taxes, but if Mark Twain were alive in the year of our Lord 2021, he would also add opaque streaming service metrics. Hollywood studios, namely Universal, Warner Brothers, and Disney have been releasing movies day and date, streaming platforms, and the theaters for roughly a year now. And while have dutifully reported box office revenues each week, they've never divulged VOD numbers, at least not in a way that carries any context. Which made it all the more shocking, of course, when Disney shattered the industry-wide omerta over streaming data by announcing that Black Widow made $60 million on VOD. So why now? Why this movie? Disney declined to comment, yet the sense, is, at least from Arrival Studio execs, is that Disney wasn't initially planning to release streaming revenues, but Marvel Studios movies come with a pristine box office track record across 23 features. Black Widow did start the weekend strong, but once ticket sales dropped 41% on Saturday to $22 million for the day, it became apparent the film no longer had a shot of clearing $100 million on a single weekend. And yet... On Sunday, the studio claimed that Black Widow earned the highest domestic opening of any MCU film after Black Panther and Captain Marvel. On box office alone, that's simply not true. Spider-Man Homecoming, 117 million. Iron Man, 98 million. Guardians of the Galaxy, 94 million. Doctor Strange, 85 million. All made more on their domestic debuts. Black Widow needed the Disney Plus revenue to push past those titles. However, Disney... However, Disney, however, declined to disclose how much of the 60 million came from domestic Disney Plus subscribers. So if we're talking Disney taking Disney's claim about Black Widow at face value, then we all know for certain that it made somewhere north of 37 million from domestic premium access. An $80 million domestic box office debut setting a post-lockdown era record is certainly nothing to sneeze at. But Part of Marvel Studios' mystique is that it's unquestioned box office supremacy, and Disney apparently needed Black Widow to be more than a middle ground financial performer for the MCU. At a quick glance, $60 million is good. By the way, this is via Variety.com. Unlike box office grosses, in which studios generally agree to split 50-50 with the movie theater owners, Disney doesn't have to share the majority of revenues for the streaming service offerings. Due to Disney's box office dominance, they sometimes get better figures. That means the Magic Kingdom gets set to enjoy all of the riches that come with the $60 million earned globally from the VOD. Of course, at $30 per rental, that means 2 million people opted to watch Black Widow at home this weekend. Plus, on top of the monthly subscription, of course. Um, you know, I, you know, when a movie generates a billion at the global box office, as MCU movies recently have, gross say they tend to gross even more money on premium video on demand rental platforms than a movie that didn't have that kind of box office run. It's going to be interesting. Uh, you know, I think that what this article is 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 running at here um, is that there's a lot of spin and a lot of um, overly optimistic numbers being reported. Um, I think that Disney doesn't report that number if the movie does incredibly well at the box office. That said, I... You know, as much as I dislike Hollywood these days, I still love the theater experience and I love all my, you know, all the employees, all my viewers who work at theaters and I want them to continue to have jobs. I just want better movies coming out. I, I don't think Black Widow by any stretch of the imagination was a bad movie. That would be disingenuous to say. It's another mediocre Marvel movie that served its purpose. You got to enjoy some popcorn, get out of the house, have an icy, have some have some uh, M&Ms or Reese's Pieces or whatever it is that you enjoy at the theater. And therefore, in that sense, it was a success. It's nothing to remember. It's nothing to write home about. But no Marvel movie has been for a very long time. And I would argue that even Endgame wasn't that great. Um, you know, it had its moments, but the movie was bloated too long. Yeah, that's neither here nor there. Um, you know, you see Trolls World Tour, which skipped theaters to debut on demand on April. Uh, sh after all theaters are still down after its launch, NBC Universal CEO Jeff Shell told the Wall Street Journal it racked up $100 million in rentals in three weeks, more than the first film made after five months in the theaters. The statement sparked controversy, nearly threatening a battle between the film exhibition industry and Universal did not share numbers ever again. People, there are a lot of people, and I've said this before, 
there are a lot of people that quite frankly will never go back to the movie theater they are so scarred by you know the, the last year that they just there's no point uh to go back into the movie theater and they just feel safer at home and i respect that uh but when you look at this when you look at what's actually going on there's been a, a massive amount of spin you see pirates and princesses black widow to break even media spin the narrative wildly and that's exactly it you're talking about a film with a 200 million dollar budget you see internally i had discussed with pirates and princesses editors that writers that look like black widow would pull between 60 and 70 million at the domestic box office in reality it's going to come in a bit higher between 75 and 80. we now know it's 80. overall that's pretty darn close to what we expected uh, but don't forget that's just 24 hours ago and trades are pushing this movie as a 90 million dollar weekend and even scott mendelson was pushing a hundred million dollar scenario all of it was bunk Beyond the ridiculous media spin and hype around this movie, I'm going to give you hard math so you can see behind the curtain. Black Widow is likely to make between 75 and 80 million for the weekend domestically. And attempts out any attempts to figure out where the money is coming from on Disney Plus is a game of folly. Disney has that info, and unless it releases it, there's zero chance will be given out, you know, the figure. Black Widow should come in around 200 to 215 million dollars for its debut worldwide, which is exactly where it came in. Disney claims $215 million um, worldwide victory at the box office and Disney Plus premiere with Black Widow. Will this distribution distribution model endanger a movie's life cycle? I mean, I don't know. It, it's it, I, I just think that you're going to have a lot of people that would rather just watch these, these uh, movies at home. Now, I used to think that Marvel movies were automatic, something, you know, something I would automatically want to see in the theater, but... Now people have pretty nice home setups. You see, it seems like a big number. Well, you might consider that $100 million of that goes before it reaches a worldwide box office pull for Sonic, Hedge, Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, I'm sorry. It needs another $100 million to beat Sonic, a movie that released at the beginning of the lockdown and had its full revenues possibilities zapped since it couldn't launch in China. A CGI live-action hybrid video game movie that was likewise handicapped by the lockdowns has Black Widow beat by $100 million. Let that sink in. Will Black Widow ultimately beat Sonic? Probably. But that's not the full game Hollywood's playing. Black Widow's total budget was about $200 million. Sonic had a cost of less than half. Just like any business, movie studios need to make money to spend money on more movies, even Disney. So you have, so what Black Widow needs to recoup that very large expenditure beyond just production costs, movies tend to double their original budget with marketing campaigns. Given that Black Widow's huge budget already, let's be on the safe side and say that Disney spent only a hundred million on advertising. I, I disagree with that. They had to advertise this movie twice pre lockdown, all of the uh, advertising to keep people interested. And then the full release of it. Remember that they only get about 25 or 50% uh, of the box office revenues. China sometimes as low as 25%. With all that understood, Disney needs to recap 300 to 400 million for Black Widow to make money. Black Widow's made 200 million and the weekends worldwide of Disney, which of which Disney will receive 120 million. Well, remember they will also receive the full 60 million from Disney plus. So it'll be interesting to watch, see if this film has any legs whatsoever. I'm predicting it won't, but I've already been wrong once. So let's see how it shakes out. Did you watch Black Widow? Did you like it? Let me know what you think in the comment section down below, and we'll talk to you again real soon.